When I was a kid, my dad used to build us an outdoor ice rink. He'd start to build the ice uh, right around Christmas break. We'd have it the whole Christmas break, and really we'd have it right till March. And it was pretty unusual for the ice to melt. But nowadays, I mean, I've tried to build ice for my kids, and there's just no way. We're lucky to be able to hold the rink for a week during a cold snap, and then it's gone. And the next best thing is really a refrigerated ice rink. And I take them to places like this right here. But, you know, looking into the future, if we don't do our part to make these things sustainable, we won't be even coming to an outdoor ice rink that's refrigerated to be able to skate. We're at the Barbara Ann Scott Ice Rink Trail right in the middle of downtown Toronto. City of Toronto has more ice rinks than anywhere else in the world and Simcoe plays a big part in the design of them as well as maintaining them. So you guys ready to get skating? Yeah. Our job is we make it cold. We need to keep it below the freezing point under all conditions from 10 degree sunny days to minus 40. We have to take all that into consideration when we engineer an outdoor ice surface. We're in the middle of a climate crisis right now. Refrigeration is a pretty key point to this because ice rinks use a lot of energy. Some municipalities, up to 20% of the natural gas and electricity are from ice rinks. What's happening around us is real and it's urgent. There's a lot of innovation to be done to find new ways of doing things that lead to emissions reductions and ultimately that goal of net zero. We're no longer pumping the stuff into the atmosphere and things can slowly start to recover. It made us want to double our efforts to make sure that we were doing our part because the alternative is there's no ice rinks, but then that compromises our quality of life, and that's something that we don't want to see happen. It's pretty neat about CO2 in general. It's like almost like a hidden secret in a way. This particular rink is really exciting because it's the first of its kind in the world. It's the first time a CO2 transcritical ice rink for a skate path has been used. When you think about it, we are surrounded by CO2 in the air. This is a natural refrigerant that has absolutely no impact on the environment. For this application, it was a good choice because the refrigerant is non-toxic, high efficiency, more than double the alternative refrigerant that was gonna be used here. We're in a park, there's always concern. We don't have to have that concern. If there was a leak, it would just break down and cause no ill effects. The idea is you're gaining efficiency by not having to take heat out of multiple steps. We go straight to the floor, we remove the heat, we use that refrigerant then to carry it and remove it. For every ton of refrigeration, it requires less horsepower to produce it. So much less, in fact, that it would be 50% or 60% compared to other systems. But a trail like that, it's just a pipe going along the design of the trail. CO2 is being circulating in those pipes, and it came back as a gas, and it's changed back into liquid and pumped again. If we can run a system much more efficiently, the customer is able to reduce their costs, and in this case, save taxpayers money. It's so great to be outside and downtown on a beautiful winter day, and the ice is amazing. When we were talking to the City of Toronto, the one key thing that was important, other than the environment, was the quality of the ice. The ice is fantastic. <laughs> this is a complicated project. We don't only have to compete against the sun here, we're competing against the sun with a thousand mirrors around it that just make it that much more intense. I think that if you've skated on rinks as long as I have, and you come out here to the Barbara Ann Scott ice rink, you're gonna see it's pretty amazing. We let the operators and the resurfacing equipment make it beautiful. Our job is to keep it frozen, and we're very good at that. As you know, like an ice resurfacer actually puts hot water on top of the ice, and it froze so quickly. The, the Zamboni came off, and I got on, and it's like that it was a crisp, brand new sheet of ice. When you have poor ice quality, you have poor enjoyment quality as well. I like to know that we provide the best ice quality because we provide the best refrigeration systems. You know what's special about this rink, Nigel? It has a CO2 refrigeration. Do you know what CO2 is? It makes me feel incredibly proud being out here with my family, skating and sharing these moments with them. A lot of these, the things that we have right now, we may have to give up as climate change continues, but knowing that they decided to install something that was environmentally friendly and performed, makes me feel really proud, actually. For me, what's unique and special about this facility is I actually got to see it develop from years and years ago. To see it the way it is now with the new skating path is really amazing. In Europe, they already moved to CO2. In North America, there's a resistance to move towards natural refrigerant. I think in 10 years, 100% of the rink will be done with CO2 in Canada. 
With Simcoe, there's a continuous improvement cycle that we think is exemplary. This is the way it's going to work on a go-forward basis. I just get such a feeling being down here, knowing that my company did something like this.